All right, so for today's video, I wanted to bring you guys a quick little video on how you can save badge points here in NBA 2K23, which badges you shouldn't equip, which badges you should equip, and overall, how you guys can save badge points so you're not using any badges that aren't benefiting you while you play here in NBA 2K23. But let's waste no time and get right into the video. So the first thing we're gonna be looking at here are the finishing badges. Now, obviously the build that I'm rocking right now does not have the best finishing badges, but I think I can still let you guys know which badges you should and shouldn't use. So personally, I think Rise Up, I would definitely have that at least bronze. It really helps you, you know, rise up above the rim when you're down below in the paint and you're down under the basket. Acrobat, if you like playing around and having fun, I would put this on maybe like bronze. That way you can do jelly layups and stuff like that. But the badges that you really, really need for finishing, some that are essential are Fearless Finisher, Aerial Wizard, obviously, so you can catch lobs. And if you have a lot of finishing badges, definitely have Posterizer and Limitless Takeoff on the highest tier possible that your build can get. I would definitely have Limitless Takeoff on at least gold and Posterizer on at least gold. If you have a lot of finishing badges around 16 to 18, I would definitely put those two badges on and then obviously have Fearless, Aerial Wizard, Giant Slayer is also a good one and Rise Up. Those are the kind of the badges, any other badges. I have Back Down Punisher on right here. If you're a big man, you can maybe throw that on. But any of these other badges right here, these five and Bully and Slithery, I would not use any of those unless, you know, you're a slasher or something like that. But for finishing, those are kind of the key badges I would personally use. Moving on to the shooting badges, you guys honestly don't need that many shooting badges to be able to shoot consistently in this game. But if you do, if you have around 15 to 18 shooting badges, which I feel like a lot of people have, these are kind of the badges I would recommend. Volume Shooter, Claymore amped agent three green machine catch and shoot and limitless range any of these other badges that you see that are grayed out i do not think they work at all corner specialist barely gives you any boost i saw a 2k live video that kind of confirmed that guard up doesn't work at all dead eye i tried to have it on and it really doesn't do much at all blinders is pretty much broken and any of these other ones up here comeback kid clutch shooter space creator they really don't do much for you at all but like i said you guys don't need a lot of shooting badges, but if you have around 15 to 18, like I said, these are kind of the ones I would recommend. Claymore is probably easily the best badge in the game if you're a spot up shooter. Amp kind of helps you if you know you're fatigued a little bit. Volume shooter, if you're playing park and you shoot at least three to four shots a game, I would definitely throw this on at least bronze. It pops up a lot. Green machine really, really helps you out a lot. Agent three is probably the best badge in the game, especially if you fade a lot. It is easily one of the best badges in the game. Catch and shoot, we obviously know what that does. And then limitless range, we obviously know that that helps you pull up from deep and kind of extend your range a little bit more. But like I said, guys, any of these other badges that you see grayed out, if you have them on, I would honestly take them off. They really don't do much. They don't pop up at all. And even if they do, it doesn't really help you out, especially corner specialists and guard up. Those are some of the most worst badges in the game. The most worst, that doesn't really make sense, but you know what I mean? But yeah, those are kind of the shooting badges I would recommend. Like I said, you don't need a ton of shooting badges to be able to shoot consistently in this game. But let's go ahead and move on to playmaking. For playmaking, this is kind of what I run when I'm kind of running a popper type of build. If you move over to when I'm running guard, these are the badges I also use. They're pretty similar but I like Floor General or Dimer. You can kind of switch out either of the two to help out your teammates. And this is with 19 playmaking badges, I will say, which I feel like, again, is kind of, you know, the median that a lot of people have. So this is what I would recommend if you have or two around 16 to, you know, 22 playmaking. You got to take some away or add some here and there. Floor General, you obviously don't need the kind of key badges that you really need if you're going to run guard or if you have around 15 to 20 playmaking Obviously, quick first step on the highest that you can get it. I only get it on silver, unfortunately. Ice grip, you really only need on like silver, but I had an extra, extra badge point here. So I just threw it on gold for the fun of it. Unpluckable, obviously, this is the more, probably one of the most key badges that you need for playmaking. Have unpluckable on the highest tier possible. I cord it on silver because that's the highest that I can get it. And then handles for days obviously helps out a lot. Killer combos. Do not put it on unless you are 6'5 and below. If you're 6'5 or 6'6, 6, 6'7, 6, 6, 6, 6'8, 6'9, do not put on killer combos. It does not help you guys at all. Trust me on this. You're just going to have to trust me. I've talked to a lot of people who are dribble heads and stuff like that, and killer combos does not work. And then Clamp Breaker, if you have enough playmaking badges, I would definitely put on Clamp, clamp Breaker, but I only get 19, so I didn't really have the badge points for it. And then these other ones, Needle Threader, you don't need. Bailout, don't need. 
mismatch don't need post playmaker and then break starter only if you're a center and then ankle breaker doesn't really work that well i also found out that hyperdrive pops up a lot so if you have a couple extra badge points throw in hyperdrive and see if it helps you out especially if you're playing wreck and you're on the break a lot this badge pops up a ton and it gives you a little bit of a speed boost so i would definitely try that out but these are kind of the core badges that you definitely need again do not put on killer combos unless you really think you need it but if you're six five or above i really don't think it helps and i've been told by a lot of dribble heads that killer combos is really just not it so that is what i would recommend for playmaking let's go ahead and move on to defense so for defensive badges this is kind of where i excel i just posted a defensive badge tutorial in my last video if you want to go check that out if you haven't already i kind of broke down pretty much every single badge in the defensive category but we're going to go over it here again in this video obviously the four badges that you need if you're a defender is clamps on the highest you can get it anchor on the highest you can get it glove on the highest you can get it interceptor you really only need on silver i just get 33 defensive so i threw it on gold post lockdown the highest you can get it if you're in the paint at all if you're on the perimeter you don't really need it workhorse the highest you can get it menace doesn't really work that well in this game and then brick wall you could throw on bronze if you wanted ankle braces you could throw it on bronze i didn't really notice any difference when i had ankle braces on or off but if you're like me and you have 33 badge points you might as well throw it on obviously if you're a center throw on box out beast it helps out a lot but pick dodger off ball pest pogo stick doesn't work and challenger do not put on challenger i ran this as a main lockdown and i noticed no difference with challenger on or off so definitely you can save some badge points on challenger do not throw that on but a lot of these you don't really need the essentials for defensive are definitely interceptor gold glove or whatever you can get it on chase down it doesn't really work that well so that's not an essential badge anchor you definitely need on the highest level clamps obviously highest level and rebound chaser if you're above 6'5 if you're below 6'5 um definitely don't put on rebound chaser but those are the defensive badges like i said i posted a defensive tutorial um where i broke down pretty much how you play defense and the best defensive badges badge by badge so if you want to go check that out link in the description or if you can just go look at my last video but that is going to go ahead and wrap up this video i hope you guys did learn something if you have any questions down below or if you have any suggestions on some badges or if you think i said something wrong about a certain badge please let me know down below in the comment section because i'm always trying to learn something new um if this video helped you guys out please leave a like subscribe to my channel if you're new we're going to be toasting a ton of tips and tricks over these next couple weeks so stay locked in subscribe if you are new and I will see you guys in the next one.